message to America this morning, then, is this. If you fit this definition of a terrorist, fear the United States, for you will lose your liberty. We need honest, reasoned debate, not fear-mongering. point of this author was that this country is the equivalent of that hijacked plane right now. We're heading to a disaster. Unless we can get control of the cockpit again. Mm. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll have a chance. These passengers took whatever they could as weapons. There was one flight attendant still alive. She had a pot of boiling water as her weapon. People had utensils let over, left over from breakfast. There was a guy on the plane named Todd Beamer, a Christian guy, a graduate of Wheaton University. He supposedly yelled, let's roll. And they ran down the aisle into the teeth of men armed by box, with box cutters. They overwhelmed those men, but they still weren't able to land the plane. But they took the only shot they had. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Flight 93 election. This may be our last shot. It's time to roll. It's time to run down. president who is more concerned about issuing apologies than in protecting Americans. We, we do not need a reckless president who believes she is above the That's right. Yeah, that's right. Lock her up. And in the death the last few corpses lay rotting on the slimy thoroughfare. The shutters lifted in inches in Temperance Building, high on Poacher's Hill. And red mutant eyes gazed down on Hunger City. No more big wheels. Fleas the size of rats, sucked on rats the size of cats. And 10,000 peopleoids split into small tribes. A new stunning report from Rolling Stone claims organizers behind the January 6th insurrection participated in dozens of meetings with Congress members and former White House officials. The article cites two sources who allege several members of Congress were directly involved in the planning of former President Trump's efforts to overturn the results of the election and the attack on the Capitol. That concludes today's news. That's quite some news. Coveting the highest of the sterile skyscrapers, like packs of dogs assaulting glass fronts of Love Me Avenue, ripping and re-wrapping mink and shiny silver fox. Now leg warmers, family badge of sapphire and cracked emerald. Any day now, the year of the dying girls. 
1984. Since 1983, the United States government has defined terrorists as those who perpetrate premeditated, politically motivated violence against non-combatant targets. aftermath of 9-11, uh, we did some things that were wrong. We did a whole lot of things that were right, but we tortured some folks. Those who founded this agency some six decades ago understood that they were creating something essential to the security of the nation, an agency that would largely operate in the shadows of secrecy, provide crucial accurate intelligence to our nation's leaders. The Times demanded it then, the Times demand it now. The CIA is on the front line in the defense of this nation. We believe in a free and open society. And we deeply believe in upholding the laws and the values.
scavenger, the season of the bitch. Just sit down the boardwalk, scurry to the ditch. Then just another picture of sound, a lonely little kiss. It's gonna be sour, we'll try to wake up tomorrow. They come. I keep a friend to read when they come. Oh, baby, come on to me when they come. Well, she's commanding on. No matter the garden, baby. You'll catch your death in that fall. Come down. Make a call. Put the diamond dog. Hey, hey. Young girl, she'll call them the diamond young girl. She won't call them the diamond young girl. She won't call them the diamond dog. Ow, 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 oh, 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 oh. I'll call them the diamond dog. Diamond dog? What the hell? Diamond dog, what the hell? Yeah, call them the diamond dog. Uh, uh, the, the diamond dog, what the hell? Yeah, call them the diamond dog. your ass on this one. Oh, 
for the likes of you.
degree Times they are at selling and the changing isn't free You've read it in the tea leaves, the tracks are on TV
to tell you the reason. You know it already. If you have ever cherished any dreams of violent insurrection, you must abandon them. There is no way in which the party can be overthrown. The rule of the party is forever. Make that the starting point of your thoughts. He came closer to the bed. Forever, he repeated. And now let us get back to the question of how and why. You understand well enough how the party maintains itself in power. Now tell me why we cling to power. What is our motive? Why should we want power? Go on, speak. You are ruling over us for our own good, he said feebly. You believe that human beings are not fit to govern themselves, and therefore he started and almost cried out. A pang of pain had shot through his body. O'Brien had pushed the lever of the dial up to 35. That was stupid, Winston, stupid, he said. You should know better than to say a thing like that. He pulled the lever back and continued. Now I will tell you the answer to my question. It is this. The party seeks power entirely for its own sake. We are not interested in the good of others. We are interested solely in power. Not wealth or luxury or long life or happiness. Only power. Pure power. What pure power means you will understand presently. We are different from all the oligarchies of the past in that we know what we are doing. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes the revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. I comb my hair till it was just right And commanded the night brigade I was open to pain And crossed by the rain And I walked on a crooked crutch I strolled up alone Through a ball out zone Came out with my soul on touch I hated the cloud And rattled the crowd When they sensed it down I stood up
Something kind of hit me today I looked at you and wondered If you saw things my way People will hold us to blame It hit me today It hit me today Just reply if you change your mind We're Fighting the eyes of the man Taking it hard Taking it hard Feel that we are paper Choking on you nightly And tell me, son, we want you Be elusive, but don't walk far For we're breaking in the new boys Deceive your next of kin For your dancing where the dogs decay Defecating ecstasy You're just an ally of the leecher Locator of the Virgin King But I love you and you fuck me pumps And your nimble dress betrays Oh, dress yourself, my urchin one For I hear them on the rails Because of all we've seen Because of all we've said We are the dead Kind of touch me today. I looked at you and counted all the times we had played. Pressing our love through the night. No, it's right. No, it's right. Now I'm hoping someone. Creatures locked in tomorrow's double feature. Heavens on the pillow, its silence competes with hell. It's a 24 hour service guaranteed to make you tell. And the streets are full of pressmen bent on getting hung and buried. Legendary curtains are drawn round the baby bankrupt who sucks you while you're sleeping. It's the theater of financiers. Count them 50 round the table. Whites and dressed and kill. Oh, caress yourself, my juicy. For my hands have all the withered. Dress yourself by a chill For I hear the on the waves As if I see Because of all we said We are the
city To love in a doorway To wrangle some screams from the door Amazing, it even smells like a street. It's a bar at the end where I can meet you and your friends. So someone's crawl on the wall, I smell the blood of the tree colors. Grown up scandals and other boys. I'm having so much fun with the poisonous people spreading rumors and lies and the stories they made up. Some make you sin and some make you scream.
shame us Some brave Apollo Someone to fool us Someone like you We want to be brothers Be brothers If you knew what's going down Someone to blame us Someone to follow Someone to shame us Some brave to follow Someone to fool us Someone like you We want to be brothers We want you, big brother. How does one assert his power over another? Winston thought. By making him suffer, he said. Exactly. By making him suffer. Obedience is not enough. Unless he is suffering, how can you be sure that he is obeying your will and not his own? Power is in inflicting pain and humiliation. Power is in tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing. Do you begin to see then what kind of world we are creating? It is the exact opposite of the stupid hedonistic utopias that the old reformers imagined. A world of fear and treachery and torment, a world of trampling and being trampled upon, a world which will grow not less but more merciless as it refines itself. Progress in our world will be progress toward more pain. The old civilizations claimed that they were founded on love and justice. Ours is founded upon hatred. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph, and self-abasement. Everything else we shall destroy. Everything. Already we are breaking down the habits of thought which have survived from before the revolution. We have cut the links between child and parent and between man and man and between man and woman. No one dares trust a wife or a child or a friend any longer. But in the future there will be no wives and no friends. Children will be taken from their mothers at birth as one takes eggs from a hen. The sex instinct will be eradicated. Procreation will be an annual formality like the renewal of a ration card. We shall abolish the orgasm. Our neurologists are at work upon it now. There will be no loyalty except loyalty toward the party. There will be no love except the love of Big Brother. There will be no laughter except the laugh of triumph over a defeated enemy. There will be no art, no literature, no science. When we are omnipotent, we shall have no more need of science. There will be no distinction between beauty and ugliness. There will be no curiosity, no employment of the process of life. All competing pleasures will be destroyed. But always, do not forget this, Winston. Always there will be the intoxication of power, constantly increasing and constantly growing subtler. Always at every moment there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless.
hopeless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. He paused as though he expected Winston to speak. Winston had tried to shrink back into the surface of the bed again. He could not say anything. His heart seemed to be frozen. O'Brien went on. And remember that it is forever. The face will always be there to be stamped upon. The heretic, the enemy of society, will always be there so that he can be defeated and humiliated over again. Everything that you have undergone since you have been in our hands, all that will continue and worse. The espionage, the betrayals, the arrests, the tortures, the executions, the disappearances will never cease. It will be a world of terror as much as a world of triumph. The more the party is powerful, the less it will be tolerant. The weaker the opposition, the tighter the despotism. Goldstein and his heresies will live forever. Every day, at every moment, they will be defeated, discredited, ridiculed, spat upon, and yet they will always survive. This drama that I have played out with you during seven years will be played out over and over again, generation after generation, always in subtler forms. Always we shall have the heretic here at our mercy, screaming with pain, broken up, contemptible, and in the end, utterly penitent, saved from himself, crawling to our feet of his own accord. That is the world that we are preparing, Winston. A world of victory after victory, triumph after triumph after triumph, an endless pressing, pressing, pressing upon the nerve of power. You are beginning, I 